Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Uh, this is for November 5th, 2019. Uh, it's, you know, rolling into the end of the year here. We've got like winter holidays coming up and uh, we had a cold snap the other day. That was kind of exciting here. Um, it's, it's getting going. We've got some cool stuff to talk about, so let's hop on in. So we had quite a few uh, modules this time around. Uh, we always love the new module stuff. Our own Wei Chen dropped a new exploit module for gaining codec injection on vulnerable versions of TotalJS, which is a Node.js framework for building e-commerce applications. Using creds which authenticate to an admin level account, an attacker can utilize the widget creation capability of TotalJS to embed malicious JavaScript into the widget itself, which gets executed server side. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if you'd like to see this in action, we gave a demo of it in our last meeting, so you can go check out the recording on YouTube. In that vein of code execution, contributor Q Kaiser added a new module for parlaying a directory traversal into un unauthenticated remote code execution for vulnerable versions of the Nostromo web server application, which is really neat. And if escalating your privilege is your jam, Metasploit contributors got you covered this time around, folks. We got four of them. Contributor PKB1s added a module to coerce Microsoft Exchange to authenticate to a URL under control of the attacker, which allows the attacker to relay the NTLM authentication to a domain controller and authenticate with the privileges that Exchange is configured for. All you need is any user creds for initial authentication with the Exchange server, and you're good to go. I believe we'll have a demo of this. Contributor Aringo provided a new Prevesk module targeting vulnerable versions of Xorg X11 server, where the SUID bit is set and low privilege users are allowed to start the server with the dash module path flag. This allows the user to load and execute a shared object as root, gaining that sweet Privesk. Contributor B. Coles provided a new Privesk module targeting vulnerable versions of X screensaver on Solaris via the dash log functionality of X screensaver, which allows creation of a user accessible file anywhere on the file system. After creating such a file, the mod this module overwrites it with a shared object and executes arbitrary code as root by using the LD preload environmental flag. Sorry, environmental variable, which is pretty cool. And I believe we'll have a demo of this. Yeah. And rounding out our list of Prevesk modules this week, contributor Tim Wright added a new Prevesk module for the ptrace mean root. ptrace trace me root. Oh, I say that three times vulnerability which exploits a vulnerability in ptrace link in Linux kernels prior to 5.1.17 to gain root privileges when executed within the context of a session with an active local policy kit agent. Pretty cool. And more modules. Contributor B. Coles added a new exploit module for directory traversal and vulnerable versions of thin VNC, allowing an unauthenticated attacker to collect arbitrary files including the thin VNC configuration file, which can contain clear, clear text creds. Welp. Neat. Our own Brent Cook dropped an urgent 11 scanner for framework, handy for locating vulnerable VXWorks targets or others using vulnerable versions of the Interpeak IPNet TCP IP stack, which is cool. And if you'd like to see a demo of this, uh, ch again, check out last week's recording, or our last meeting recording. It's uh, up on YouTube where Brent showed it in action. And contributor Tabor provided a new gather post exploitation module for extracting credentials from a grub configuration file, which our own Brent Cook then helped coalesce with features of an earlier grub password collection module, and Brent also added grub D scanning. Sweet. And some other valuable work going on. Contributor Zero Steiner added the ability to customize your interpreter prompts, very similar to how custom terminal and console prompts work. This makes it really easy to, for example, identify system information about each target by just glancing at their interpreter prompt. Definitely worth checking that out. Contributor Hoodie updated the Android Futex ReQ exploit module, also known as Towel Root, adding a check method and missing documentation. Appreciate that. Contributor Duck SecOps updated the Docker file debunk from Alpine 3.9 to 3.10 and Ruby 2.6.2 to 2.6.5. It's always good to stay current. And we had a number of module documentation updates courtesy of contributors NSA and Hoodie, and we always really appreciate those. And some bug fixes. Uh, contributor nil OX42 fixed a bug in NOPSLED generation, where the dash S option now correctly will generate code to save a register's value. Contributor B Coles located and fixed a couple of modules, specifically the Elasticsearch Traversal Scanner module and the local exploit suggester post module 
to correctly use the newer custom check messages, uh, avoiding unexpected exceptions. And our own Brent Cook fixed a bug in progress migration for reverse TCP interpreter sessions, ensuring proper thread handling with newer versions of Ruby. And our own Jeffrey Martin fixed a credential import exception when importing PW dump files. For details on recent framework activity, you can always check out the weekly Metasploit wrap up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to everybody who helps make Metasploit better through their contributions. We definitely appreciate it. Thank you. And now the fun part. Demos. Mr. Dean, you, you on the line? Hi, yep, I'm here. Fantastic. Let me stop my share here. All righty. Yours to grab, sir. Okay. All right. Can everybody see that okay? Uh, we can. Cool. So this will be a, a fairly quick demo. Um, this is the uh, Exchange uh, web server uh, uh, mobile escalation. So over on the on the left here, this is a uh, server under the uh, attacker's control, just testing to capture any. Um, and on the right here, I'm just going to tell this to run now, since it can take a minute for Exchange to, to catch up. Um, couple of very basic options. Tacky URL is just this machine we have on the left here. Um, you do need to specify the Exchange version. It only works in 2013, 2016, and only then for a couple of older versions. You can see here we've got the credentials of the administrator account, although it doesn't actually matter which account you have the uh, credentials for as long as they have a uh, email server. So hopefully in the next you, um, we should be able to see that the uh, credentials are captured, hopefully. Um, there's always the, the nerve wracking bit, see if it actually comes through or not. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> I think the exchange only uh, only tries to send it every every minute or so. Um, let's make sure it's actually still running. Oh, well, it's been up. Uh, let's go through it all again. Should we uh, should we swing back by, uh, do another demo and, and swing back by, or you want to? Um, it should be fine, hopefully. In okay. Just a second. Um, should be able to hit run, and it should be good to go. Uh, let's copy this. Set the attacker URL. And run. Uh, so you see, yeah, it, it does. It was successful. It's just that Exchange likes to take its time. So when you ran it on the right side there, it actually is telling Exchange to go authenticate with what you're running on the left hand side? Uh, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you could, instead of capturing this, you could relay it on to a, a domain controller or whatever. But I thought this would be better to show in the demo, but it is, uh, I, I promise you it worked earlier. <laughs> <laughs> the, demo, the demo gods. Uh, so here's one I put earlier. You can okay. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just like the cooking shows, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it this is, this is what you should be getting, um, something that looks a little like this. I'm sorry that that hasn't worked out exactly as planned, but uh, there we go. I'll see if I can get it working again, and then you can maybe swing around back to me. Uh, this is good. Uh, yeah. is it, can you scroll back up to show the output of what it, what it normally looks like? When a, yeah. So that's the Exchange server authenticating with that attacker URL you specified? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. Neat. Awesome. Thanks, Dean. I appreciate it. All right, let's see here. Let's see. Let me grab it real quick so I can show the title slide, Shelby. And then, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab this for two seconds. And we've got another demo for the X screensaver privesque, uh, courtesy of Shelby. And I'll stop the share there. Terminal. Okay. I already have a session. So uh, this is uh, a privesque against X screensaver. Uh, it's kind of similar to the X work privesque that we talked about earlier in that 
Uh, X screensaver is also a uh, set UID uh, executable. Um, so let's see. All right. Uh, so the options here are pretty straightforward. Really, all you have to do is set a session. And I already have a session. So let's see. Set session one. Um, let's see if I have anything else. Oh, yep. Set all those. And so what this does, it starts up X screensaver, um, writes a log file to uh, anywhere you prefer, which, yeah, it tells you the path. And, uh, and then it overwrites it with the shared object, and you get, hopefully, root access. Yeah. So. Nice. Yep. Good old Solaris. <laughs> oh, wow. Neat. And I think that came from B. Coles? I yep, think. that yeah. was B. Coles. Yeah, super cool. Right, any questions? How prevalent is that? Is that, like, pretty prevalent, or...? Um, just we'll another just thing to try? Yeah, I'd say it's another thing to try. This is actually fairly recent. Um, it come out, uh, geez, I don't know what month, but it's this year, yep. CVE, so. Excellent.